Hi, in today's video, we're going to follow Dave around as he shows us the ins and outs of the rotary table. It's one of my personal favorites. I'd probably put it up there, you know, in a manual machine shop right behind, you know, a digital readout and a quick change tool post. Uh, another thing to look out for is the color of the machine. We're trying out a new color and leave a comment down below and tell us what you think. Smithy Industries. We're going to do a video today to show you why you may need a rotary table. I mean, the rotary table, you know, you first look at it and, okay, it goes round and round. But, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with a rotary table. So we're going to show you first how to mount the table and how to get it centered. So let's do that now. Okay, now I've got the table already mounted on here. It might look a little strange because I've got it on a little bit of an angle. But I've done that so I've got a little better access to my handle. Okay. Now what we need to do on the rotary table, I've made a little adapter here to go into uh, one of my collets. And this is going to help me get the rotary table um, sort of a preliminary centering. You know, get it close. All right. So you see the table, you know, you bolt it on, table's way over here. Let's bring this down and we'll just move the table around until we get it pretty close here. There we go. Look at it from the back. And I got the front and the back pretty close. Look at it from here. And we'll move the side to side down a little bit. There we go. Okay, now that's the preliminary alignment. But for most things, we're going to have to get it a lot closer than that. So let me show you how we get it just right on the money. Now we're going to use a dial indicator to, to make sure this is centered. If you have one of these little small ones that you can mount in a chuck or a collet, these are very sensitive here. You may not have one of these, but I know you've got a regular dial indicator. You have to in your shop. Okay? I've got it mounted in here so I can rotate it with the spindle. And what we're going to do is bring it down into the bore of that rotary table. Okay? And let's see where we're at here. We're going to set this on zero here. Okay. Now, I'm going to spin it 180 degrees, we'll do it slow and careful, and now, let me take a look at it back here, and okay, we are off by about 25 thousandths, okay, so let's move the table half of that distance, okay, let's go back here, okay, let's see what we got now, all right, we're going to turn it back around, and we should be at 25 thousandths here. And, well, just a little too much. Okay, let's put it on zero again. Turn it back around here again. Check the back. Okay, we're right on. We've got zero here, and we've got zero here. Okay. We've got it centered in this direction. Now we'll do the same thing with the dial indicator here, check it, turn it over 180 degrees and check it there. It may take a few adjustments back and forth, but you can get it exactly dead center. You can get it as accurate as you need for your particular project. Okay, I've just finished mounting the back plate for the chuck. We're going to use the chuck to hold the part that we're going to work with today. I've mounted this with the three bolts and the T-nuts. And I've zeroed it in with a dial indicator, just like it did on the table itself. So now we're ready to actually mount the chuck. Set that back out of the way. And if you got that plate zeroed, then your chuck is all ready to go. All we do is tighten these four bolts, and our chuck is mounted. Now that I've got the chuck mounted, this is a piece we're going to work with. It's partially finished. I started working on it here about a week ago. Didn't have time to get it done. What this is, this is an oil filter adapter for my motorcycle. Oh, look. See, I had this clamped in here, and I used an end mill and turned the table to do this groove here. I used a ball mill to do this, but I got to finish drilling a couple more holes here that I didn't, uh, didn't get done. So let's just clamp this in here. If you happen to have a bigger piece, the chuck comes with 
with outside jaws, okay, which will, will hold a much larger piece than what I've got here. But the inside jaws will be fine for today. Okay, I've got my part mounted in here, and I went back one and three-eighths inches from the center, because that's my hole pattern here. You see, this will go right down in that old hole. Now, I've got eight holes there. So if we take on the calculator, if we take 360 degrees divided by 8, that means my holes have to be 45 degrees apart, okay? So I don't forget that. 45, okay? Magic marker, take it off there with a little thinner afterwards. Now, what I've got here, I'm setting on 20, so I want to go another 45 degrees. So that's going to bring me over here to... 65, okay, and that's the location of my next hole. Now let's go ahead and drill that here. We'll get our machine into gear. Okay, I've got my part finished here. I'm all ready to thread these holes and it's ready to go. Now, you don't always have to use the chuck. A lot of times you can bolt something directly to the face of the uh, rotary table with clamps. The chuck's mighty handy to have. But you can also take this same table and you can turn it vertical. It's horizontal right now. Let, let's show you what it looks like vertical. Now you can see that we've got the rotary table mounted on its side. So our workpiece is actually in a horizontal position. If you were making a part like this, I've got a slitting saw in here, and you'd come through and you'd make your cuts, make your first cut there, shut the machine off, go around in the back, unlock your table, and turn this to the next position for your next cut. Lock your table down, come out, and make that cut and go all the way around. Once you've made the cuts with your slitting saw to take out the middle material, now you can change this blade and put in that custom blade that's going to make the exact profile of the gear. Come back and go through the same procedure on each individual tooth. So there's a lot of versatility to a rotary table. On our next video, we're going to show you what they call dividing plates. They will go on here and they'll give you even more choice of how many divisions in a circle. You can do 8 tooth, 16 tooth, 17, 27, 49, 85. It it's, it's really increases the capabilities of your rotary table by having the dividing plates. So we'll see you on that next video.